I, I mean, if the purpose of the Sabbath is to create a forum for God to interact with his children, is it more or less difficult for us to interact with God now than it was in Eden? It would there be more go. difficult. I mean, Game we have over. this great big thing called what? Sin. That's and right. sin, the Bible says, your sins have separated between you and your God. So if the Sabbath was essential for Adam and Eden, why would not the Sabbath be essential for us outside of Eden, living in this world that is tainted and saturated with sin? Can someone say amen? Absolutely. And so there's no question in the first era, the first epochal age there, yes. pre-fall, the Sabbath stands. But the next age is the patriarchal age. Now someone is going to say to you, I guarantee it, if you're out giving Bible studies or if you're sharing even at all, invariably, someone is going to say to you, but the Sabbath commandment never occurs in the book of Genesis. The Sabbath commandment never occurs in the book of Genesis. And you know what? That's true. You can read Genesis chapter 1 all the way down to Genesis chapter 50. The Sabbath commandment does not occur in the book of Genesis. But I got news for you. None of the commandments occur in the book of Genesis <laughs> because the book of Genesis is not a book of laws. It's, a book, of it's a book of origins and a book of beginnings. Can you say amen? That's right. So then do we have any evidence that the patriarchs, Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and even before that, Methuselah and Enoch prior to the flood, do we have any evidence that they kept the Sabbath? The answer is yes. Open your Bibles to Genesis. What book, everyone? Genesis 26. Genesis chapter 26. If you'll go there, Genesis chapter 26. We're looking at verse 5. Genesis chapter 26 and verse 5. The Bible says, Genesis chapter 26 and verse 5. Speaking of Abraham. Speaking of who, everyone? Was he one of the patriarchs, yes or no? Yes. It says, because Abraham, and I want you to notice there are four important words here. Because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my what? my charge. charge, and it says, and my commandments, commandments and my statutes. statutes, and my laws. So notice the words here. Charge, commandments, statutes, and laws. Question. In the days of Abraham, did God have laws? Yes. In Absolutely. the days of Abraham, did God have ordinances? Absolutely. In the days of Abraham, did God have statutes? Absolutely. In the days of Abraham, did God have a charge? Yes. Sure. So this is hundreds of years before Sinai, right? Just imagine here, here's great big Mount Sinai, right? So we are hundreds of years before we ever arrive at Mount Sinai where the law was codified. We'll talk about that in just a moment. And Abraham is keeping God's commands. Abraham is keeping God's ordinances. Abraham is keeping God's statutes. And Abraham is keeping God's charge. Now, go with me in your Bibles to 1 Kings chapter 2. 1 Kings, what chapter, everyone? Chapter 2, you'll find that in the Old Testament. 1 Kings chapter 2, we're going to read the first three verses. David is dying, and on his deathbed, he has some words of instruction, some words of exhortation for Solomon, his son. 1 Kings chapter 2, beginning in verse 1. It says, Now the days of David drew near that he should die, and he charged Solomon, his son, saying, I go the way of all the earth. Be strong, therefore, and prove yourself a man. Now look very carefully at verse 3. And keep the what? Charge. Keep the charge of the Lord your God to walk in His ways, to keep His statutes, to keep His commandments, commandments His judgments, and His testimonies. Now look at this. As it is written in the law of who? Moses, that you may prosper in all that you do wherever you turn. Now think about that for just a moment. All four of those words are referred here by David to Solomon, the commandments and the ordinances and the laws and that's the right, statutes right. as occurring in the law of who? Moses. Moses. Now who came first, Moses or Abraham? Abraham. Okay, who, who was it? Abraham. Abraham came first. So did God have ordinances in the days of Abraham? Commandments in the days of Abraham? Charge in the days of Abraham? Statutes in the days of Abraham? And Boom. all of those things were later codified. They were later what, everyone? Codified. If you have your Bible, I want you to hold it up just like that. Hold it up just like that. Now, your Bible is, is in the form, what's called the codex form. Okay, it's called the what, everyone? Codex. The codex form. In the days of Jesus, their, their scriptures were not in the codex form. They were as scrolls. As what, everyone? Scrolls. scrolls. And so that word codex means, or codify, means to write down, to formally write down. And so, formally write down. Moses was responsible not for initiating the law, not for the creation of the law, and That's not right. for the giving of the law the first time. He simply codified a law that had already existed from the days of Adam and onward through the patriarchal age. Can you say amen? So ample, ample evidence. Incidentally, there is a, there's very, very powerful evidences of the fact in the book of Genesis that the law existed because this, this nasty little thing called sin existed. Right? And can you have sin if you don't have a law? Of course not. No, for example, Cain slew his brother who, everyone? Abel. 
Abel, and do you remember what God said to Cain? Cain said, hey, listen, if you do what's right, you'll have no problems. But if you don't do what's right, sin lies at the door. That's right. Was there such a thing as sin in the days of Cain? Absolutely. And, and Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed because of their gross immorality and sin. True or not? Absolutely. All before the time of Moses. And how about this one? When, when, when Potiphar's wife laid hold on Joseph and Joseph pulled himself away, he said, how can I commit this great sin, sin again? Well, what sin is he talking about? Of course, the seventh commandment, thou shalt not commit what? I don't now, here's the point. All of those commandments existed, but they were oral in their passing on. They were oral in their tradition. They were codified at Mount Sinai. If that makes sense, say amen. Amen. And so the Sabbath exists in the pre-fall era. The Sabbath exists in the patriarchal era, era, rest assured. But Nathan, what about the prophetic area, the time of Moses? Well, rest assured that the Sabbath was kept and honored in the prophetic age, the age of Israel. And this one... Uh, it's almost kind of funny because nobody disputes that. I mean, I live in Detroit. There's a large Jewish population there, and everybody to this day knows that the Jews keep the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. I drive by synagogues all the time, chock full of people. If you have your Bible, you can just go right back there to Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 to 11. That's the Sabbath command. God, through His great prophet Moses, delivered the Ten Commandments to the people of Israel. And right there in Exodus chapter 20, you have God speaking, thundering from Mount Sinai, the Ten Commandments. There it is again. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter, your male servant, your female servant, your livestock or the sojourner who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and mm. rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Amen. You know, it's fascinating. The Sabbath commandment begins with the word remember. Amen. I want you to think about that for a moment. The word remember comes from the Latin meaning to call to mind that's the member part, and the re means to do it again. So remember means to call it to mind again. So it's important that we get this because it ties into David's last point, and that is the Sabbath from the time of creation to the time of Israel. Through the patriarchal age. Through the patriarchal age. Really, when God says to the children of Israel, remember the Sabbath, it's saying, you had it, now call it to mind again. again. Do you follow that, yes or no? So How here, can you call something back to your mind that was never in your mind? It's not possible. Okay. It's not possible. So right there in Exodus chapter 20, when God says, remember... Now, by the way, isn't it curious? For me, the fact that majority of the world has forgotten the seventh-day Sabbath, the fact that the majority of Christians think that Sunday is the day to go to church... For me, that is one of the greatest evidences that we're living in a great controversy between good and evil. That's right. That's one of the greatest evidence that God exists. It seems and, and that there is a devil who hates the truth of God. Because if there was no God and there was no devil... Why would, there be a, why, why would everybody have it wrong? If the whole religion thing was invented, why would everybody have it wrong? It just doesn't make sense unless there is a real spiritual battle raging over the truth of the law of God. Mm. In fact, come with me to Jeremiah. Amen. Jeremiah? Come with me to Jeremiah 17. This is fascinating, my friends. When you look at the history of Israel, when you look at the history of Israel during that prophetic age, that time from Moses to Malachi, when you look at the history of Israel in times of faithfulness and prosperity, the Sabbath was honored and kept. But in times of rebellion and disobedience, the Sabbath was neglected, and the, 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 the fates of the people of God went along with their faithfulness to the command. Hmm. Notice Jeremiah 17, verse 27. Listen to what God says. If you do not listen to me to keep the Sabbath day holy and not to bear a burden and enter by the gates of Jerusalem on the Sabbath day, then I will kindle a fire in its gates, and it shall devour the palaces of Jerusalem, and it shall not be quenched. Hmm. Now, I want you to understand something here, my friends. You have the, the Jewish nation 
And they began to disregard the Sabbath. They began, they were living in a foreign land. They were, they, were, they were living, and God is saying basically, if you, they were living in Jerusalem rather, but God is telling them, if you do not get faithful in this area, I'm going to destroy your cities. It's going to be a nightmare for you. And it's fascinating. They did not listen. They did not listen. They did not listen. And ultimately, they were taken captive to Babylon. While they were in Babylon, they learned a lesson. And that's when they became overboard about how to keep the Sabbath. Mm. That's when they began to develop all their legalistic rules. Yes, God wants us to remember the Sabbath day. Amen. God wants us to do what the Word of God says about the Sabbath, but God does not want us to go the way of the Pharisee and make unending and mountains of unbiblical rules about how to keep it. Amen. Now, this is so important here. God says in this prophetic age, when the Jews were, 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 were at the peak, God is saying here, essentially, if you listen to me and you obey obey this commandment, you will have prosperity, but if you don't, you will have adversity. So, the, the, the Sabbath was kept in the prophetic age? Fully. Absolutely. In fact, as we've been saying, you can rest assured that the prophets in Israel to whom they prophesied <clears throat> was, and were called by God to know, honor, and proclaim, and even enjoy the Sabbath. Amen. 